Hey guys, you are listening to the Time to Football podcast. In this week's show, we're going to talk about the wild card round of the NFL playoffs. We're going to preview each game, give you injury updates, news around the league. Also, we're going to dive into a couple topics that are going on in the NFL. And is there a quarterback dilemma going on in Philadelphia? When it's all said and done, who's going to be the quarterback of the Eagles? Nick Foles or Carson Wentz? Hello, everyone. Welcome to 2019. Wow. Wow. Time sure flies by. You know, this is the first video that we're coming out with slash podcast of 2019. And it's actually going to be the first ever first video of 2019 in time to football history. Can you believe that? Like, there will never be another first video of 2019 ever in time to football history. That's just that's just amazing. Well, my name is Hassan Khan. I am the wonderful and fabulous host of the show, Time to Football. It's been a while since I came out with a podcast, but I'm glad to be bringing it, bringing it back to you guys. Um, so if you're watching this on YouTube, you're probably like, well, Hassan, where you at? You know, because I'm just looking at a graphic right now. You're probably like, where, where are you? Am I just going to be looking at this for like 30, 40 minutes? Listen, you don't have to. You don't have to because this actually comes out on iTunes, on the podcast app. If you actually pull out your phone, go to the podcast app and search Time of Football, you can subscribe to us on there and listen to these weekly podcasts on the go. If you don't want to do that, totally fine. You can pull up the uh, YouTube video, but... Leave this playing in the back while you go, I don't know, play a game of Madden or something. Uh, but the reason why I'm not uh, doing a, uh, it's a video podcast up on YouTube, yes, but it's not actually me in front of the camera for this podcast. Usually it is. This week, I've just been so busy, been working like 12-hour days, always on the go, been out of town, that I'm literally right now just sitting in my car. I'm sitting in my car, I got my microphone, and I thought I could speak skip a podcast this week, but that's not what I'm all about, you know? It's all about the grind, baby. Get her done. Get that podcast out, and regardless of how much work you got. Lost plenty of sleep, but I'm glad to get this podcast out because I have so much fun. But we are going to start kicking off these podcasts with a new segment that we're introducing. I thought it's 2019. Why not, you know, add a little bit of fun to it. So, we are introducing a new segment called Mind Blowing Facts. Wow. Yes, indeed. That was Hansel. So hot right now. Hansel. Owen Wilson himself saying the infamous wow. Because what's going to happen in this segment is that I'm going to read mind blowing facts that happened in the NFL. And after each fact that I read, you're going to hear wow. It's awesome. I, I just got a new soundboard, and it's it's great. I love playing around with it. So I was like, this is the first sound that I have to put on the soundboard. Is Oh. It's just so. Wow. It's so great. Oh. It's wonderful. Um, so starting off with our first mind-blowing fact. Last week was the end of the regular season, so a lot of records and statistics were broken. Well, Brown's rookie quarterback, Baker Mayfield, set the record for the most passing touchdowns in a single season by a rookie with 27. Wow. Some of you already knew that, but for you guys that didn't know that, Baker Mayfield made history at the rookie quarterback position. Number two, since 2013, Nick Foles is 12-4 and four in the months of December through February. Peyton Manning is the only quarterback to have a higher winning percentage in those months. Wow. So, Nick Foles, wonderful, clutch, does a good job when it comes to the postseason. Believe this or not, Mark Sanchez probably won't start another playoff game in his career, but he already has a higher passer rating in the playoffs than Phillip Rivers, Brett Favre, and Peyton Manning. Wow. The Mark Sanchez. Um, the Sanchez. I don't know if anyone calls him that anymore. Number four, the Colts are playing this weekend. Head coach Frank Reich 
was actually a quarterback for the Bills back in the 1990s. Reich is the only quarterback to start multiple playoff games and never lose in the playoffs. Wow. There have been quarterbacks before that have uh, played a playoff game and they're 1-0 and in the playoffs, but Reich is the only one that started more than one game and he's undefeated. He took over for Jim Kelly while he was dealing with an injury. But speaking of the Colts, their leading tackler is Darius Leonard, a Pro Bowl snub, voted for him, don't know why he didn't make it, who had 163 tackles on the year. That led the NFL by a big margin. The second place leader for tackles was Blake Martinez. He had 19 less tackles than Leonard. And Leonard did all of this in 15 games. He missed wow. a game this year. So, 163 tackles in 15 games. Um, if you do, if you can do the math, I, I don't know what the answer is. Just comment down below with the answer. How many tackles is that a game? That's a lot. But those were your mind-blowing facts. If you guys had another mind-blowing fact, um, hit us up. You know, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, leave a comment down below. Let us know what that fact is. Or if you're listening to this on iTunes, Hit us up on social media. The username for Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram is at Time to Football. Really connect with us, and we would love to get in touch with you guys. Um, moving on, we like to talk about some news that are going on in the NFL, and we're going to recap the disappointing and somber news that happened this past Monday, and that was Black Monday. So that is the day after the regular season where – all these coaches get fired and there were six that were relieved of their duties on Monday and those were as follows Dirk Cutter for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Adam Gase for the Miami Dolphins Vance Joseph of the Denver Broncos Todd Bowles versus uh, or for the New York Jets Steve Wilkes for the Arizona Cardinals and Marvin Lewis after 16 years and seven playoff appearances, but not a single win, was relieved of his duties from the Cincinnati Bengals. So that's going to leave eight head coaching positions that need to be filled for 2019. Another big story that's coming out this week, Antonio Brown. A lot has been happening with him. And now he's upset to the point where he's requesting a trade. Um... I, I, I don't know for 100% if that's true or not. Um, I mean, Ian Rappaport is the one that reported it. So he's, he's a very reliable source. I trust him a lot. Um, so more than likely it is true. Um, but he says he's pretty much done with the Steelers at this point, And he would love to move on get a new, new uh, season in his life going in 2019. So what are your thoughts on that? Definitely you know reach out to us and, and talk with us about that. We, we definitely want to interact with you guys. Another story that happened is NFL draft analyst Mike Mayock, um, who works for NFL Network during draft season, he's the new general manager of the Oakland Raiders. And it, it could be a good move. Um, I Again, we love to interact with you guys and we love to hear your opinion. I want to uh, definitely hear what you guys think, especially if you're a Raider fan. Um, what, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, but personally, you know, I think John Gruden brought him in because he's just really good at scouting. Um, in an interview, Mayock said that he took the position because five first-round draft picks in the next two years, so much cap space and free agency. This is like a, a little boy, a fat boy in a candy store for him. Um, so he's a new general manager of the Oakland Raiders. Also, the last story we wanted to touch up on, Dwayne Haskins declares for the NFL draft in 2019. And this is actually big news because Ohio State um, the Ohio State product is actually really good uh, 51 touchdowns in the last two years um, I think only nine interceptions in that time span as well and it's big because for a um, NFL draft class that wasn't really strong in in quarterbacks he's probably going to be the first quarterback taken don't know if he's going to be in the top five or not but um, he's, he's definitely going to be a, a first round projected talent going into the 2019 NFL draft. Now let's kind of go into the wild card round of the playoffs. And to really start off about that, let's update you guys on some injury news that are going on. Um, Melvin Gordon, he has an injured ankle. 
Seems like he's been dealing with a lot of injuries with his knee, his ankle, and his hamstring uh, this year. But it's his ankle this time. He's expected to play this Sunday. Nick Foles, he had bruised ribs in the game against Washington, but he's fine. He's going to play this Sunday. But Hunter Henry, the tight end for the Los Angeles Chargers, who tore his ACL and OTAs before the season even started, was placed on a temporary injured reserve list. But he was taken off a few weeks ago. He was eligible to practice, and now he is eligible to play. And he's going to be playing, uh, making his 2018 season debut this Sunday against the Baltimore Ravens. So, um, Stephen A., if you're taking notes, Hunter Henry is playing for sure this Sunday. Um, Other injury news, Tyrone Crawford, the defensive uh, lineman for the Dallas Cowboys, has an injured neck. Um, he's day to day at this point. He was a limited participant on Wednesday. Um, so we'll see if, uh, if he's going to be playing this weekend on Saturday night. Uh, Delano Hill, uh, has an injured hip. He was placed on IR. Um, so for the rest of the season, he will not be a factor, uh, for the team. So the last player we want to injured or want to update you guys on the injury report on is Ryan Kelly, a very good center for the Indianapolis Colts. Back in week 16, he hurt his neck, um, but he's expected to play this Sunday. Um, The Indianapolis Colts offensive line has been stellar this year, so having him will be big time for Andrew Luck and that Colts offense. So that was your injury updates for that. Now, Now getting into the meat of the wildcard games, let's get into the weekly picks. Um, Starting off with the first game that's happening 435 Eastern Time on Saturday, Colts versus Texans. AFC South matchup, and the Colts, for a team that was 1-5 at one point, ranked number 32 in all the power rankings that were out there, they find themselves 10-6, getting that sixth spot, and having to be road warriors throughout the whole entire NFL playoffs. The Houston Texans were on a nine-game winning streak at one point. They finished the season at 11-5, and and they're on a roll with Deshaun Watson in that offense, and that defense has been really good as well. The matchup that we're really looking forward to here on Time to Football with that game, the Colts' offensive line versus the Texans' defensive line. Obviously, we know all about the Texans' defensive line. We know about um, J.J. Watt, Jadavion Clowney, but for the Colts, they went from... This is an interesting stat. From 2017 to 2018, they went from worst to first in the NFL as far as most sacks given up. They gave up they gave up 56 sacks last year. That was the worst in the NFL. And this year, that offensive line only gave up 18 the entire year. That's on average 1.1 or something like that per game. Um, But that offensive line, can they keep J.J. Watt and Jadavion Clowney at bay? Because if they can do that and give Andrew Luck the time that he needs, that he's been getting all year when he threw 39 touchdowns, the second best in the NFL this year, that's going to be scary. Um, Scary good for the Indianapolis Colts. So that's a matchup we're looking forward to. Now, what we do on Instagram is we post um, polls for you guys, weekly picks that you guys determine and you choose who you think is going to win each game. So over 500 of you guys, I believe close to even close to 600 of you guys voted on Instagram and here are the results. So 25% of you guys are choosing the Indianapolis Colts and 75% are favoring the Texans. So 75% to 25% in favor of the Texans. You believe the Texans are going to win at home? Um, Our pick at time of football? Oh, gosh. It's tough. I really love love the Indianapolis Colts. And because of that, because of that offensive line, I'm going to choose the underdog in this game. I'm going to choose the Indianapolis Colts to beat the Houston Texans. So I'm going against you guys. We'll see who wins. So uh, the majority of the time of football faithful favors the Texans. Next game, Seahawks versus Cowboys. 
Saturday night. Um, the Seahawks, their story, they were out of the playoffs, but then the last five, six games or so, they just really got their run game going. Rashad Penny, Chris Carson especially, I believe in the month of December, 500 yards to five touchdowns rushing. Seahawks have been good last half of the season, and that catapulted them to the playoffs. For the Dallas Cowboys, let's you want to talk about the second half of the season, let's talk about the Dallas Cowboys. Not giving a shot, three and five at one point, said Jerry Jones or uh, should fire Jason Garrett. But here they are, division champions, one game ahead of the Philadelphia Eagles, and they have the fourth seed, winning the NFC East. They host the Seattle Seahawks and Jerry World. Um, so it's going to be good to see how the run game's going, and I believe who's going to have the be- better run game is going to determine who the winner is. Um, so me personally, here at Time to Football, we are going with the Seattle Seahawks to win this game. So give us two for two right now on the road. Let's see what the Time to Football faithful are choosing. Okay, so, wow, this is actually pretty close. 60% are favoring the Seattle Seahawks to win and 40% the Dallas Cowboys at home. The Cowboys all year have been underdogs, so let's see if they can pull out this victory. But um, for you guys and for myself, we are on the same wavelength. We believe that the Seattle Seahawks are going to win. On to the Sunday game, the Los Angeles Chargers versus the Baltimore Ravens. This is a rematch of the Sunday game or the Saturday game that they had um, week 16 where the Ravens won 22 to 10. The Chargers, their story is that Anthony Lynn has been great in coaching. Um, A candidate for coach of the year, he's got him to a 12-4 record, the fifth seed in the AFC wildcard race. And really, this team is one of the more balanced teams in the AFC. Top 10 offense, top 10 defense, depending on which category you're looking at. For the Baltimore Ravens, they've been great on defense all year, and that's going to be the key for them this weekend the thing about facing a team in the playoffs that you've already faced in the regular season is that you're already prepared so i believe that the chargers they could limit lamar jackson and that baltimore offense to less than 22 points that they scored on them in week 16 and on the flip side looking on the other side of the ball the chargers offense we expect them to score more than just 10 points because they're they're way better than that and we know that um, so the matchup to look forward to is can this Chargers offense score more than 10 points um, relying on their run game, relying on Philip Rivers and his arm, um, looking at busted coverage and using a lot of play action and really dissecting this Baltimore Ravens defense because it's going to be tough. And that's going to be the key point for the Ravens if they want to win this game because this game is going to be a lot closer than 12 points than it was in week 16. So us at Time to Football, we're going to go ahead and keep on going with the streak of the road games. We're going to pick the Los Angeles Chargers to win this game, mainly because the Chargers, before the season started, I've said this all the time on Time to Football, if you've been listening for a while, I've said that I believe that the Los Angeles Chargers are going to the Super Bowl, whether they're going to win or not. They're going to the Super Bowl, and I believe that Phillip Rivers is going to retire if he makes the Super Bowl. I'm still sticking by that to this point. Dude, you're about to have your ninth kid. I, he's a family man. He's going to go back to Decatur, Alabama, you know, and he's just going to be enjoying his life with his family. Um, so I'm picking the Chargers to win. Let's see what you, the time of football faithful, um, think are going to win. All right, so we've got the results pulled up. Chargers, 47% of you guys are going with the Chargers The Ravens, 53% are picking the Ravens, 53% to 47%. So it's really close, but you guys are giving the slight edge to the Baltimore Ravens. I love the Ravens. I think they're a really talented team, but I'm going to go with the Chargers in this one. In the last game in the playoffs um, this week, the Eagles versus the Bears. The Bears, their story is that their defense alongside Baltimore is one of the better defenses in the NFL. But also on top of that, um, their offense has been, sometimes it's been great, but most of the year it's been good enough. And that's all that matters. For the Philadelphia Eagles, they made it at the last second after the Bears, ironically, 
beat the Minnesota Vikings and allowed the Eagles to get into the playoffs. So I know that the the Bears this past Sunday, it was a crazy scenario. They had to win, and if they won and the Rams lost, then the Bears would get a first round bye. So they were obviously playing their starters and they wanted everyone to go all out so that they could get that get that buy. But also at the same time, you gotta think about it because in Minnesota, when they faced the Vikings in week 17, they had the score of the Eagles game up on the uh, the Titantron, the big scoreboard. Because the Vikings, they were looking at if they all they gotta do is win. And if they win, they make the playoffs. And if the Eagles lose, they still make the playoffs. So they were uh, scoreboard watching the Eagles-Redskins game that was going on. Well, for the the Bears, I know that teams don't want to lose on purpose. For for you guys that say that, oh, teams should just tank so that they can get a better draft pick. Listen, no player wants to do that. Maybe the organization wants to do that, and maybe that's why, like, John Gruden's giving up all these players for first-round picks. But, like, when you go to the actual game and you're actually coaching or playing, they're going to give it everything you got. No one's going to, like say oh i'm just gonna i'm just i just want to lose no one's gonna say that um so the bears didn't want to lose but you got to be thinking like if the bears were also scoreboard watching during that game would should they have purposely gotten the loss because if they did then that means that the bears would again face the minnesota vikings this week in the nfl playoffs and they're more than capable of beating the vikings more so than the eagles i would say So it's just an interesting dilemma. But ironically, they put the Eagles in the playoffs last second, and they're going to have to see if that was a good decision or not. For the Eagles in the postseason, Carson Wentz injured again, and Nick Foles has to come in. He's a quarterback for the rest of the way. Foles, the one that won the Super Bowl last year, is phenomenal. We mentioned earlier in the podcast, 12-4 in the months of December through February in his entire career. So for Nick Foles, can he do it again? So for us at Time to Football, our pick, this is uh, this is actually the last game that I've thought about. I haven't had a chance to really sell on this pick, but I am a sucker for a good story. I love that kind of sort of stuff. So I'm going to go four for four on the road, and I'm probably crazy for doing this, but I'm going to pick the Philadelphia Eagles to beat the Chicago Bears. Let's see what you guys think. So you guys believe that the Bears are going to win over the Eagles. 56% of you guys are favoring the Bears, and only 44% of you guys are favoring the Philadelphia Eagles. So that one's a little bit closer too, um, but we'll see what happens. But those were your weekly picks, and uh, it's going to be great this weekend. Before we get into a couple of debates that we talk about in the NFL, I just want to go ahead and recap um, something that is very amazing and near and dear to my heart and has been um, phenomenal in the growth and top of football, and that is Patreon. So I A few of you guys have signed up for Patreon already, but Patreon.com is a site that you can go to and sponsor your favorite content creator. So whether it's a YouTuber, podcaster, filmmaker, model, whatever you name, anyone that makes content and think of it like a GoFundMe, but it's every month. So you can sponsor someone and for many of you guys at Time in Football, we offer rewards and perks if you sign up on Patreon. That means giving as little as $1 a month. If you give a dollar a month, you become a Patreon member and you already become eligible for the amazing perks that we have, such as monthly giveaways um, and other things that we're going to be doing later on in the season. So if you go to patreon.com slash time to football and you sign up, this is the best way to support time to football. If everyone that is listening to this podcast or watched a, a YouTube video for us on Time Football, gave $1 a month. That's it. Just one McChicken a month. We would have enough revenue to 
grow Town of Football tremendously. Again, that revenue doesn't go towards me. That goes towards the growth of this channel. So patreon.com slash time to football. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash time to football. I left the link um, to that website in the description of this YouTube video. And if you're listening on, on iTunes, it's in the description of this episode of this podcast. Patreon.com slash time to football. All right, time for some hot topics in the NFL. Speaking of hot, it is hot in this car. I mentioned on the top of the show that I am in my car right now because I've been traveling a lot for work. I've been working 12-hour days. I work in broadcasting, so I've been working from city to city. And it's this is the only time and place that I could find to record a podcast. And the car is off. It's... 45 degrees outside, and I'm not really wearing much, if you know what I'm saying. Maybe it's hot because you've been talking a lot and your breath is heating up this car, sir. It's ma'am. Have you guys seen that video? Where, like, uh, it was at a GameStop and the employee was, uh, I I don't know what the employee and this individual was arguing about, but the individual was in the process of uh, changing, like, genders, and uh, I don't want to be, like, disrespectful or anything, so, you know, excuse me if I say it, but, like, I think they were transgender. I don't know what the official term was, but um, the employee said, sir, and they were in the process of changing into a woman, and the uh, individual was like, it's ma'am, it's ma'am. I'll show you who a sir is if you go outside. Like, meaning that they were going to fight him. Um, And just, like, knocking things over. Gosh. So, that reminded me of, like, my retail days when I worked at retail. And I don't miss it. I don't miss it one bit. I could totally relate to that employee. I've mentioned early on a, po- on a podcast this season, I got a death threat when I worked at retail. I've gotten racist comments. When I've worked at retail, heck, I get racist comments when I post a video on YouTube. But, you know, yeah, that was, a, that was an interesting video. Gonna clear the air here, okay? I didn't mean to bring up that video because I was making fun of transgender individuals. Don't push that stuff or pin that stuff on me, okay? Time to Football has no political il- affiliation with anything, all right? Okay, it's 2019. I understand it's the first ever first video in time of football history in 2019. You'll never see a first ever first video in 2019 in time of football history ever again. And I understand everybody has to be politically correct. Don't don't push that stuff on me. I I I'm 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 not Okay. I just want to talk about football. And speaking of football, let's talk about some hot topics in the NFL going on right now. This is a hot topic that is discussed amongst the NFL community, and it's about Nick Foles and Carson Wentz. When it's all said and done, who will be the starting quarterback of the Eagles? I understand that Nick Foles, his contract is up, and more than likely, they're not going to re-sign him. But say in a weird scenario, hypothetical situation, Foles had a couple years left on his contract. Wentz, after dealing with all of his injuries, you know, then who would the Eagles choose? Foles had that magical run last year going all the way to the Super Bowl and this year taking over for Carson Wentz after he fractured his his vertebrae. For Carson Wentz, he had his magical season cut short last year when he tore his ACL and this year, um, unfortunately, he was cut short again when he fractured his vertebrae. So to really break this down, because everybody has their own opinion. Some people say it's Nick Foles. Some people say it's Carson Wentz. To really break it down, you got to look at their statistical performance um, over a certain span of games. And there is no better opportunity to look at the statistics than right now. Let's pull up the graphic um, that we have for you guys. So for you guys listening on, on iTunes, I'll just go ahead and read this off. But we compared the last 11 games 
that each player has played. This includes the postseason, so including Nick Foles in the playoffs and and the Super Bowl. Um, we compared their yards, touchdowns, interceptions, completion percentage, and their quarterback rating. And the reason I did the last 11 games is because Carson Wentz has played 11 games this year. And since he tore, tore his ACL, it's been 11 games since he's played. For Nick Foles, since Carson Wentz tore his ACL, he's played 11 total games up to this point, meaning that's the postseason of last year and the end of the regular season of this year. Let's go ahead and read off the stats. Um, for Nick Foles, in the last 11 games, the amount of yards that he threw, 2,800, to be exact, 2,865. For Carson Wentz, he has the edge, 3,074. So Wentz has thrown 200 more yards than Foles. Okay, well, in touchdowns, Foles, 18 touchdowns to Wentz's 21 touchdowns. Wentz, in 11 games, has thrown uh, three more touchdowns than Foles in 11 games. Interceptions, dead even. Seven interceptions apiece. Completion percentage, Foles, 68.6% of his passes completed. Carson Wentz, 69.6. So one whole percent higher than Nick Foles. And quarterback rating, Nick Foles, 97.6. And Carson Wentz, 102.2. Again, these are their statistics of the last 11 games since December of 2017 to now. So if you look at those uh, statistics... Wentz tops Foles in all of those statistics. Except interceptions, those are dead even. But Wentz has been clear-cut statistically the better quarterback than Foles. People want to give the edge to Foles because of the Super Bowl that he won. But it makes you ponder, if Wentz was in the playoffs and was in the Super Bowl and was playing right now, would they still have won the Super Bowl, and would they have a better chance of making the Super Bowl? Makes you wonder. So definitely let us know what your opinions are. Who should be the starting quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles? Who's better, Foles or Wentz? Um, And let us know. But for us at Town of Football, my opinion, I'm going to have to say that the Eagles should stick with Carson Wentz. And it's not that Foles is a bad quarterback. He's he's good. I love Nick Foles. Um, but I hate to say it, but athletically, Wentz is just better. He's just a, a better passer, better athlete. It's because he almost was the MVP last year. And this year, he hasn't been bad at all. His stats, looking at it, it's average to above average. The Eagles are doing a great thing of... of sticking with Carson Wentz and starting him over Nick Foles. I know that a lot of people were saying after Nick Foles won the Super Bowl that, yeah, give it to Foles. Foles should be the starting quarterback. I was like, what are you what are you talking about? Why? A, a Super Bowl, no, it's not a knock to Nick Foles, but it is a team victory. And if you put the better player in the quarterback position, Who knows what Carson Wentz could have done with that Philadelphia Eagles team. And that's why I believe that Carson Wentz should be starting over Nick Foles. Now we move on to the last segment of the day, and that is fan questions. We ask you guys to submit your questions through social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and we pick out a few and we love to interact with you guys. First one is from Mr. McElmo's Drunk. I love that username, man. What are your thoughts on the playoffs this year and who should have made the playoffs and who shouldn't have? I I think it's going to be good. I think all teams have a lot of talent on them and uh, we're going to, as NFL fans, going to enjoy the football that we watch. Uh, who shouldn't have made the playoffs and who shouldn't? Or who should have and who shouldn't have? As far as who shouldn't have, I don't think I have a single team. Honestly, like I said, um, there's going to be some good football. I think all teams are deserving. Um, of making the playoffs. It wasn't like one team made it as seven and nine just because they're in a weak division. You know, all teams have uh, really battled and worked hard to be here. So um, as far as who should have made the playoffs, 
You know, I'm saying this. I am a Falcons fan, um, but I'm I'm gonna say the Falcons, not so much because I am a fan of them, but just look at look at the record this year, seven and nine. All right, so that's very average in the NFL. Look at the circumstances that they were dealt with. The two injuries uh, to their starting safeties, losing two of their starting offensive linemen, losing their starting running back, losing their linebackers, and all with that, Matt Ryan and Julio Jones were able to put up all pro seasons, and they were, all, they were able to go 7-9. and, and nine. That kind of circumstance, you would have to go five and eleven. But given those circumstances, that's actually pretty good to go seven and nine. Um, it makes you ponder and think: if they didn't have those injuries, where would they be? Would they be nine and seven? Would they be ten and six? I, I think that's the one team I would have to go with the Atlanta Falcons as far as who should have made the playoffs um, if those injuries did not happen to them. But unfortunate circumstance and. You know, hopefully next year they can rebound and they'll be able to make it. Uh, next question we got is from King Nate. This is also from YouTube. Do you think Wilson and Carson got snubbed from the pro blow? I kid you not. It says pro blow. Uh, we all know that he meant pro bowl blow. That's a. Uh, it's quite the technique, King Nate. I don't know if that's appropriate to mention on the show, but um, to answer your question, man. Uh, he's talking about Russell Wilson and Chris Carson getting snapped in the Pro Bowl. Let's start with Chris Carson. Um, he had a great end of the year. Um, actually, a whole year overall, but December is where he w- really did take off. Um, you look at the running backs that made the pro- the Pro Bowl for the NFC. You know, it's hard to get over Todd Gurley and Ezekiel Elliott, and even. Christian McCaffrey, who got snubbed, but he's probably the biggest um, NFC running back that got snubbed. But after Christian McCaffrey, yeah, I'd, I would say Chris Carson. Um, I would put him in along the lines of uh, comparing him to an AFC running back, Derrick Henry. Henry, who, <laughs> who's been non-existent the first half of the season, not even the first three quarters of the season, and then the month of December... Eight touchdowns and like 600 yards rushing. And at that point, it's too late to vote for the Pro Bowl, and he missed out. Um, so I, I, I'd compare him to someone like him. So uh, as far as Russell Wilson, same thing. Um, I think that Matt Ryan had a better year than Russell Wilson, um, but he's next on the list after Matt Ryan as far as making the, uh, the Pro Bowl. Um, Jared Goff made it. He's and, and Aaron Rodgers. Those are the uh, two NFC quarterbacks that I would probably switch out if you want to put in Matt Ryan and Russell Wilson. Um, but Drew Brees for sure should have made it for the NFC. Um, last question is from Ming Yang. Um, for next year's fantasy draft, is Devontae Adams a top 10 pick? If so, where would you rank him? Thanks. Love the show. Appreciate the question, Meng. Um, as far as where I would rank him, um, top 10 pick, he's definitely top 10 for wide receivers. I believe he's going to be, honestly, probably second after Michael Thomas. You could say DeAndre Hopkins if you wanted. You could say Odell, Julio Jones. But just by the amount of touchdowns that this guy gets, forget yards, because he'll, he'll, he'll get 900 a 1, thousand, eleven hundred yards, not as good as like Julio Jones's fifteen hundred yards, but touchdowns, 12, 13, 14 touchdowns a year. Yeah, I'd rank him after Michael Thomas. Um, as far as the top ten pick overall, there's just too many good running backs, man, and running backs are very valuable, especially if in your PPR league, um, or in a half point PPR league, um, getting someone like Christian McCaffrey, Ezekiel Elliott, um, heck, I would even put David Johnson ahead of Devontae Adams. So to answer your question, uh, top 10 overall, no. Uh, but top 10 for um, wide receiver, absolutely. Even top three for wide receiver position. But um, those were your uh, fan questions. And that actually brings us to the end of this wonderful podcast. We appreciate you guys sticking around for this long. 
Um, again, support the support the brand. Um, go to Time of Football's Instagram page, Twitter, Facebook. Like, subscribe, tweet us, um, and, and connect with us on there. YouTube, subscribe to this channel, Time to Football, for more content. For you guys listening to this podcast on the podcast app, make sure you go over to our YouTube channel, Time to Football, and subscribe to us on there for more uh, video content and vice versa. If you're on YouTube, go to the podcast app um, and subscribe to us on there so that you don't have to watch a 40-something minute video up on YouTube. Appreciate you guys tuning in to this podcast and uh, enjoy wildcard round of the NFL playoffs. And remember, it's mailed.